Hey, welcome back. Astro with SVJator here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make morph and follow path animations. Whether you've been following the first two parts of the series or you're just jumping straight into this one, by the end of this video, we're going to have a full and finished animation that you're going to be able to export and use for any of your projects. All right, let's get working on our folder animation here. So once our folder opens up and then goes away from the view, we want this paper to move to the middle of the canvas here and then we want to make that unfolding effect. So I'm just going to hide my check mark for now because I don't want to see it right now. And then I'm going to rename my two parts here. So this is the top and this is the bottom of the paper. So when it starts opening up, I do want it to move to the right. So I'm going to add a position animation so I can either animate, click animate and then click position or just do shift P, making sure that we have both layers selected. In this case, we have it grouped. So shift P. That adds that uh, position keyframe. And then once the folder is completely gone, we can say we want this piece of paper to be right in the middle, at least horizontally, because we are going to need some room for this to grow uh, to kind of like unfold. So I'm actually going to also bring it down a little bit. So this way we, we are sure we're going to have enough room for it to, to unfold. So let's see what that looks like now. And at this point, I want to start working on the two shapes that I have here. So the animation is actually going to happen on the top of this paper. So I, I do want to turn my top into a, a path. So remember, we can do shift command P for that or click here. And this is going to allow us to use that node tool. And we can select the, the two bottom nodes here and then do this kind of animation to make it look like it's unfolding. So. I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure I'm here at one second. So I'm going to select my top uh, path here and I'm going to do a morph animation. Remember this is, if we convert this into a path, this is the only way we're actually going to see that morph animation. So I'm going to bring my, my timeline marker to maybe one and a half second. And then I'm going to do this morph animation. So it's going to go from there all the way to being a big piece of, of paper, which might be a little too big now that I'm looking at it. But it's okay, we can always fix that. So let's see what that looks like. And that looks kind of like it's unfolding, right? Now, I think maybe at this point, since it's too big, maybe we can make it a little bit smaller as it comes out from, from the folder. Since we're not seeing the whole thing at first, maybe we can make it smaller before it comes out. So I'm gonna add an additional scale animation here. And then once it reaches the, the bottom side, it's just gonna be slightly smaller. So we don't run out of, of room in our canvas to, to do the next animation. So that works. So, and now for the rest of the animation to make sense, we need to change the color of the bottom part of the paper. So for that, we're going to animate uh, and do fill color, or we could do shift C. So we're going to change that fill color from that original gray that we had into uh, a white to match the, the color of the other sheet of, or like the, the top part of the paper. So. That way we have that cool unfolding effect here. So let's see the whole thing one more time. We have our paper. And now that this animation is looking a little more complete, I think, or rather to make it look more complete, I think we can do, we can use that check mark, but we, we can add some text the same way we did that label previously with, with, uh, with the pen tool. We can also do the same to make some, uh, some path animations. So. Let's say our paper opens up, unfolds, and then we get like a little bit of text written on it. So let's do maybe three or yeah, in this case, I think we might have to do like eight and then we'll do the, the rounded ends again, duplicate that. Maybe this one's a little longer. So remember to use that, the, the node, the node tool here with eight. So it doesn't lose the, the, like doesn't look weird, like the ends. And maybe we can do something like that. Now, another useful alignment tool that we can use is if you select three elements like this and you want them to be separated like the, by the same, the same distance here, we can actually do click here. So it's going to vertically distribute the, the three elements here in this case. So that's pretty useful. Okay. Now that I have my three lines here, let's just make sure that we are at the point where the paper uh, finishes unfolding. And then there are a couple of ways to accomplish the animation in which this line looks like it's kind of like drawing itself from, from the left to the right. So I'm going to show you both ways. 
um, just in case you want to apply this to something slightly different. But for this one, I'm going to do a stroke offset animation here. And I'm going to do maybe in half a second later, I'm going to add a new keyframe. And then I'm going to go back to the initial keyframe here. And I'm going to find the length property here. So in this case, it's 83.85. So I can do 83.85. And I'm going to match the same number to under dashes. So we need the same number as, as in length for offset and dashes. And then as I go to the next one, I just want that offset to, to go from the 83.85 to, to zero. It might not be uh, at zero by default there. So just make sure you're changing offset to zero. And that way, if we go back here, that is animating uh, perfectly the way we, we needed to animate. The other way would be to make it a morph animation. So we could do a morph animation. We go forward maybe a little bit longer because it's a, it's a slightly longer line. We add another keyframe and then we can go back to that first keyframe here. And then with the node tool, we can bring that all the way to the left and also it would draw itself. In this case, you will also need to add an opacity animation to make sure that we're not seeing anything there unless you actually wanted the circle to show. But since that's a little more complicated in this case, I just wanted to show you how it would be possible to do it in a couple of different ways, but I'm actually going to delete this. And I'm just going to do the stroke offset animation. So I'm going to do exactly the same. And I could actually, I think I don't want it to start at the same time. So I'm going to do, I actually forgot to make this longer again. So in this case, let's do 140, 100.46 here and then copy into both offset and dashes and then go forward a little bit to maybe around two and a half seconds and then bring that offset number to zero. And then it should be drawing itself. Uh, like, you know, like kind of like text. Uh, and then we're going to do the third one here, exactly the same, maybe 0.3 seconds later, we can do stroke offset. We're going to find that number under length, 116.71, copy that, and then paste that into dashes as well. And then maybe it ends around here. So we just have to bring that offset number to zero. This way, all of our lines are looking like they're drawing themselves on the paper. So once that happens, I want them to go away because this is where our check mark is going to animate. So I just want them to kind of like disappear at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to grab all of my layers and then once they're done animating, maybe give them like a little bit of time for them to just exist on the paper. But then I'm going to grab all three layers there and I'm going to animate the, the opacity. So we're going to bring that from zero to from 100, I mean, to zero. And it's going to happen fairly quick, quickly. We could do something like that. They could even, even go away a little bit faster. So just something like that. And we can also stagger that if we wanted. But I think in this case, it's probably not necessary. Now, once I go away, I want that check mark with circle that we have here to appear. So I'm going to make sure that we are aligned right in the center. And what I wanted to do is to scale up from the middle a little bit. So I'm going to add a scale animation here and maybe I'll go one, two, three point three seconds here. And then it's going to go from maybe like 0.7 to one. So something like that can happen fairly quickly, but actually I'm going to move this to once those lines are completely gone. So. I actually don't want my, my check marks to show until the, the lines are completely gone. So once they're here, let's just put it here. Um, in this case, we're going to have to, since obviously our paths were coming from, uh, like not showing at all, not because of the opacity, but because of the, of the stroke offset. But in this case, we do have to make sure that our, our check mark is hidden. So for that, we're going to do an opacity animation. And so I'm going to animate here opacity, and then I'm going to bring that up gradually to 100%. So we're just going to go from 0 to 100, so something like that. And then at this point, I want my paper to do the opposite of what it did before. So instead of folding, it's going to uh, fold back into two, like we had it originally. So since we already had that as like its initial state, all we have to do is find those keyframes and copy and paste them. So let's find, let's find our paper. I'm just going to close this for now. My paper's right here. We have top and bottom. 
So I want the opposite animation to happen. So let's see what we have here. I have my top layer and I have my bottom piece of the paper. So I'm going to copy the initial fill color. So it kind of turns into that gray color again. Once we have our, our, our check mark appearing. So let's see around here. It's going to the paper, the, let's see, uh, the top paper, the one that was gray. So bottom paper, I think, yeah, fill color. We're gonna turn it into gray again, but I, I actually don't want it to like gradually change to gray. So I'm gonna keep it white until the very last second. And then once it, it needs to fold again, that's when the that opacity is gonna change. So I think I'm just gonna paste it here for now. And then I'm gonna move it to, it first to start changing when once that check mark is in its final position there. Not its final position, but kind of like before the next step for it. And then we're gonna do kind of like the same for the top part of the paper. So we're gonna find that last keyframe that we had for the morph animation. And then we're gonna do the same. We're gonna copy and paste to kind of like reverse that animation. So it's gonna be something like this. I think it's a little bit too fast to really like see what's going on. So maybe just add like 0.1 second more, and I think that works. And then I'm gonna finish the the green animation here, the check mark animation. So at this point, mm, I'm thinking the check mark is gonna go up at the same time that this is happening. It's like folding again. The check mark is gonna go up. So we're gonna we're gonna do a position animation, and we can bring it up, and then to give it kind of like a like a flatten effect uh, to to make it look like it's gonna stamp that paper. I think I'm going to also add a little bit of a scale animation here. So maybe we can make it flat from the top a little bit, just like that. And then we're gonna back, we're gonna go back to the initial pos initial position, or maybe even more, because I actually wanted to to go down to the middle of the paper here. And then I also want that initial scale, which is just like it's just gonna look like regular actually like this size right here. So the second keyframe there for, for the scale. Let's see what that looks like. And then I do want it to stay like that. So we can actually see the, the end of the animation there. But yeah, now we have a perfect loop there. And then, you know, we get stamped. Actually, if you want to see, you know, you can see every step of the animation if you just drag the, the, the timeline marker to the left and right, but if you do shift, you can see it more smoothly. So you can actually see it like in slow motion. And sometimes this is the best way to, to catch little problems or things that you might wanna fix. I think in this case, we're all good here. So yeah, there we have it, uh, animation of a folder. And we have used so many different techniques and this is, this is pretty cool. So it's gonna loop. And then at this point, you can also go ahead and export this. So I'm gonna show you the different export options here. We can also save it by the way, make sure you're saving it. And then we can export it. We're gonna have a bunch of different options here. So it's gonna depend on where you are putting this file, this animation file. Sometimes if you're working with a developer, for example, they might give you like specific uh, formats that maybe they'll need. So in this case, Let's say we just want an SVG for web and you're gonna have a bunch of different options here. And for now, let's just keep it simple. Just know that for example, JavaScript is gonna have more advanced animations compared to CSS. So uh, you can see the documentation for that to understand which one you should use. If it's something very simple, you're probably good with CSS, but if you have advanced effects, then you might need JavaScript. And then the only thing I'm gonna do here is make it infinite. So in this case, it's just gonna loop forever, uh, or you can even do like a, a specific amount on, amount of iterations uh, in this case. So yeah, then we can go ahead and export it. And then this is going to download our folder .svg animated. So I can actually go here to my, to my folder. I'm gonna click here. And then if I put it in the browser, I can see it in action in the actual browser if that's my intended, intended use for, for my animation. And that is how we use morph and follow path animations. Now we have a completed animation that you can go ahead and export and use for any of your projects. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one.